There's some trading methods out there that take next to no work. You spend about five minutes trading and you're done. And you can make thousands of coins doing this. But there's other trading methods that take much longer. You need to do multiple things at the exact same time. And today we're actually going through one of those methods. One of those methods where it does take a bit of time and you do need patience. But at the end of the day, you'll be making at least 1000 coins profit on every single card that you sell. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to make some very easy coins without having to need patience, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. Head over there to get yourself some cheap, fast FIFA 22 coins, completely reliable. And if you use Fnatic 5 at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. Getting back into the video, today we're looking at changing players' positions. The premise is very simple. We're going to be looking at a player in a default position. We're not going to be looking at the price that they sell for out of that default position. We're going to buy a position modifier. We're going to apply it to that player and we're going to sell them, hopefully to be making a thousand coins profit per card. And this is actually very easy to do. It just takes quite a few steps for you to set it all up. And on top of that, it may take some time for them to sell. But if you carry on relisting them, they will sell. So firstly, we need to find a list of players. I always go to Footwiz, I put in rare gold and look at the top five major leagues being Premier League, Serie A, Ligue 1, Bundesliga and La Liga. And then you can select the position. The position that you select here is entirely up to you. I always look at center defensive mids as my default position and I always look to convert them to center mids later on. So I will always put in CDM. The only position that I wouldn't recommend looking at is your fullbacks. These always seem to take so much longer to sell when you convert a player from a left back to a left wing back or a right back to a right wing back. Whatever position that you do select, you will have a list of players. Now it's time to actually search what they go for out of their default position. Because my list of players on Footwiz shows loads of center defense and mids within the top five major leagues, when I go through each player's name individually, I'm not going to be searching that position. Instead, I'm going to be searching in the center mid position. The only way these players can be within the center mid is if someone converts them. And what I'm looking for when I actually search these filters and compare these player prices is how much they actually go for. With doing just a bit of research before this, you can actually find how much a position modifier goes for whatever position you're looking at. And on top of that, on average, you're looking at rare gold players, especially the ones that I was looking at, going anywhere between 700 to 1000 coins. So with me looking at center defensive mids to center mids as a position modifier, I know they go for around 2000 coins. With the players, they go for 700 to 1000 coins, maxing out at around 3000 coins in total. This means that if I see any players listed for this or less than this, it's not worth me doing because I'm either going to break even or I'm going to have a loss. So I was looking for any players that got converted to center mids that had a price above 4000 coins. If I sold them for 4,000 coins, it would give me around 800 coins profit after EA tax. And this may sound like it's going to take a long time for you to be able to find these types of players, but it really doesn't. There's a lot of them out there. Your price for the minimum amount of coins you want each player to be selling for within that position may be completely different. And it all comes down to the position modifiers you're looking into. CDM to center mid has always been fairly expensive across all FIFAs. But a striker to center forward is considerably cheaper. So if you're going to be going for that position, well, your overall price won't be that much. You can have it at a lower price for you to still be able to make a thousand coins. Once you've done a bit of research, now it's actually time to get things going. Firstly, you need to buy a position modifier. The way that I did it for the recorded footage was just buying the cheapest ones there. But if you've got the time, you could spend some time stipend to get them cheaper, or you can even get them in open bids. The next thing to do is to actually buy the player. All the players that are in the center mid position that were going above 4,000 coins, I actually searched for them within their default position, their center defensive mid position, and I found that they were going anywhere between 700 to 1,000 coins. Whatever their price was, I just bought the cheapest ones. Yet again, I could spend time sniping to get them for a couple hundred coins cheaper, or I could even spend time bidding to also get them cheaper. It's worth pointing out that I didn't get a crazy amount. I didn't start buying 10, 20, 30 players and storing them all to my club. The reason for this is because once I convert them to that center mid position and list them, I will flood the market. So instead, I look to get two or three cards per player. 
This would make sure that I'm able to make a good amount of coins, but also I'm not flooding the market. It also looks incredibly suspicious when there's loads of pages worth of one player in one position, all listed at the exact same price, all expiring at the exact same time. So just getting two or three of each player makes it so much easier. When I've bought the player, I will send them back to my club. I'll place that player in my squad, go into consumables, apply the position modifier, and then list them on the transfer market. The price that I list them for all depends on what's currently up there. I always make sure that I'm undercutting the market, but still making sure that I'm able to make profit. Sometimes I was just listing these players at 4,000 coins, which would give me about 800 coins after EA tax. There were other players which I listed at 5,500 because the cheapest on the market at the time of when listing them was about 6,500. So I undercut the market by 1,000 coins and they did manage to sell. This is where judgment and a bit of timing comes in. Just make sure that when you are listing them, you are listing them as the cheapest on the market. And then it's just a rinse and repeat cycle. As said, I will only do two or three cards per player. And then as soon as that's done, instead of that just being the only player that I focus on, I will start to look for other players to do the exact same thing. Find another center defensive mid player that has been converted to the center mid position. See if they go for more than 4,000 coins. And if they do, quickly see how much I can buy them within the center defensive mid position. Buy them, apply a position modifier, and then list them on the transfer market at that higher price. As said, it does take quite a bit of time. You do need to spend a lot of time going back and forth. Sending one player to your club because the others are duplicates, and then applying a position modifier to do the same thing again. Send another player to the club to apply a position modifier. I wish there was an easier way to do this, but there isn't. But with it, it is worth it. I'm making at least 800 coins profit after EA tax. Most of the players that I research into go for a couple thousand coins more than what I can actually get them for. So this gives me a couple thousand coins profit per card. And with this, it does take some time to sell. You might need to relist them several times before they actually go, but they will go. It was the exact same when we were originally trading with players that were already out of their default position. I got comments from people saying, why would anyone bother to do that? They could simply just buy the player in their default position, buy a position modifier themselves and do all the work for a fraction of the price. And yes, they can but most people don't. Most people value their time more than what they value their coins. So to save them time as they're building their ultimate teams, they're just going to buy what's ever listed on the market within that position so that they don't have to faff about to doing it all themselves. And this is why it's important for you to make sure that when you do list your players, yours are the cheapest on the market. Because even though those types of players do value their time more than their coins, they're still not going to be going for the most expensive option when if they just went to the next player along, they can get it so much cheaper. So by making sure that yours is the cheapest on the market, they will most likely buy yours. Whilst you're doing this method, it does also link back to the previous method. So I will leave a link to that in the description down below. Whilst you're researching, you can also look to see if there is a price difference, a price difference between the cheapest on the market to the second cheapest. For example, there will be loads of different occasions where you find a player that's been converted out of their default position and they're all listed anywhere between 2,000 to about 4,000 coins. But all of a sudden, you come across one which is listed at 800 coins. It's still a smart idea for you to buy that one at 800 coins and list them to still be the cheapest on the market, but for it to be enough where you're able to double or even triple your coins in some cases, depending on the player's price. This happened several times to me whilst just recording the footage for this video. Another thing that you could do is look for players on bids. This is if you do have time. Very similar to the previous example where you're able to find a player a lot lower compared to the lowest buy now on a buy now, you're able to actually find players a lot lower compared to the lowest buy now on a bid. They'll all be selling anywhere between 2,000 to 4,000 coins again, but when you look on the bid, there's not long left and they're only going for around 650 coins or whatever their lowest is dependent on their rating. Yet again, it's a smart idea to add that player to your watch list. And if by the time it gets down to the last 30 seconds to one minute and they're still at that price, it's a smart idea to put a bid in. 
If you're able to get that player for how many coins you put in, yet again, you're able to double or even triple your coins just by listing them as the cheapest on the market, dependent on that player's lowest buy now. Really, you're able to put three of these methods together just as you check players out of their default positions. Now, this is a final reminder that this can be done with any position. For this video, I did just look at center defensive mids to center mids. This is always what I look at because it's always what players go to first. But it's just as effective if you take a cam to a center mid, a cam to a center forward, striker to center forward, center forward to striker, left mid to left wing, right mid to right wing, right wing to right forward, left wing to left forward, whatever it is. As long as you find a player within their default position and then move them out of that position, you then have options. You have options to buy them within that original position where you'll be able to get them at their cheapest by a position modifier to move them. And as long as you've done the calculations and your research correctly, you'll be able to list them at a higher price where you're able to make profit after EA tax. And this will always be a trade method that is valuable because not that many people do it, but everyone at some points will need one of those players within one of those positions for their team. And it's likely that those players will value their time more than their coins and that's when they buy the player off you. If you do have any questions about the trading method, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.